Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. of time, men have worshipped many gods, among them the god of fire. Even today, on a small island off the coast of India, fire worshippers walk unharmed through a river of burning coals to honor their fire god. Another god worshipped by men is greed. The love of money, called in the Bible the root of all evil, has tempted men to lie, cheat, steal, and kill. In other words, they too walk through a kind of fire, and some are hideously burned. Christy, my love, call me King Midas, because anything I touch turns to gold. You'll be embroidered with diamonds, bedizened with emeralds, garnished with pearls. You'll be festooned with bracelets, anklets, necklaces, rings, earrings, even a nose ring of rubies. If your little heart desires. Our mystery drama, Trial by Fire, was especially written for the Mystery Theater by Nancy Moore and stars Norman Rose and Michael Tolan. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Webster's Dictionary defines greed as the excessive desire for more possessions than one needs or deserves. Mr. Webster understates the case. Greed is an insatiable appetite for more and more worldly goods. Too much is never enough. A man so afflicted mortgages his morals and barters his soul. Such a man was Brad Stewart. Last year in New York City. No, let a friend of Brad's tell this story. Tom Hendricks lived it. Thankfully, I didn't. Why are the rascals of this world so often such charmers? The answer, of course, is that charm is an absolutely essential characteristic of a con artist. Brad Stewart was so charming, and his girl Christine so blind. Christine was a sweet little thing, gentle and trusting. I never could figure why anyone as nice would attract someone as devious as Brad, or why she, well, what naive young girl wouldn't fall for all that charm? How could she resist a man, a handsome, charming man, remember, who courted her with such poetic extravagances? Rings on your fingers, Christie, bells on your toes. That's not a patch on what you'll wear when my ship comes in. Sweetheart, when that happens, and it will, I'll garland you with diamonds and spangle you with pearls. <laughs> I don't need all those things, darling. I do. You'll be embroidered with amethysts, garnished with sapphires. Oh. Yes, you'll be festooned with bracelets, necklaces, rings, earrings, even a nose ring of rubies, if your little heart desires. <sighs> And my girl will make music wherever she goes. A wild talent with words. Another requisite of a con man. Was Christy to take that rhapsodic nonsense seriously? Catch on that no deal was too shady to help Brad beat the system, make the world his oyster with a perfect pearl inside? She never questioned where his windfalls of money came from. Even after he disappeared for days on business, he said. I clinched another big deal, Christy. Everything I touch turns to gold. Call me King Midas, and you're my princess. <laughs> Castles in the air? I'll build a dozen right on the ground. Prince. 
Prince Charming, King Midas, and Christie, the princess locked in a tower of love and innocence. An article in a travel magazine was to change all that. Brad read the article, grabbed the phone, and dialed my laboratory. Oh, I'm a research chemist, and that's exactly what Brad needed. Hendrix Laboratory. Tom, Brad, one question. When you were on that trip to Ceylon, you went to a fire walking, didn't you? To Sri Lanka. What? Sri Lanka, that's Ceylon's new name. It's really their ancient name, and now I... I don't give a damn about its name. You did see a fire walking, yes? Yeah, what about it? Plenty about it. What I want to know is this. Those natives said that that walk on coals. It's a fake, isn't it? Well, I told you that I saw it. No, I mean they protect their feet with some kind of secret herb, right? Wrong. No tricks, drugs, gimmicks. Oh, I don't believe it. Look, I'm telling you that I saw them walk through a blazing inferno with bare feet and they weren't burned. You sure? No protection at all? None. Hey, Tom, there's got to be an angle. Uh, maybe so, but doctors and scientists who've studied the phenomenon haven't found it. You know, I checked out one firewalker myself before and after. He didn't put anything on his feet before he walked, and those feet weren't any different after they sank in coals nearly up to his ankles. How the devil do they do it? Yeah, no one knows. Well, the people who do it know they have to. Not scientifically. They're just not telling. But spiritually, they know. What? Well, you see, Brad, firewalking is a religious rite. Several people in Ceylon, walkers and non-walkers, told me that those able to do it have attained some sort of high spiritual development. Yeah, whatever that means. Well, you see, everyone can't do it. Only the ones who okay, are real. Okay, okay, skip all that. Look, here's the important question. Firewalking can be fake, can it? A lot of jokers have tried to fake it, especially fools from this part of the world. They were burned to a crisp for their trouble. Well, I say it can be faked. Listen, I'm coming over there to your lab. What for? I'm busy. Too busy to make a million bucks? What? I'll tell you when I get there, pal. Keep the home fires burning. to the laboratory, he was too on fire, shall we say, to explain the fantastic plan he had already dreamed up. He plunged right into ways and means. Tom, I got the principle of this thing all figured out. And you've got the know-how to invent it. Refrigeration. Refri I, I invent refrigeration and we make a million. Or well, you're a few years too late, genius. All, all right, all right, I'll explain. I read this article about fire worshippers on the island of Kamala. Their annual firewalk ceremony is next month. I'm going over there and walk on fire. Are you out of your skull? What for? Hey, listen, listen to this part of the article. Wait till I... Um, yeah. yeah, here it is. An island legend has long been held as sacred truth. One day, the Kamalans believe a stranger from afar will conquer the holy fire will walk without blemish through the burning coals. The stranger will be a man of white skin, of pure heart, of pure faith. For centuries, the islanders have awaited this stranger, this favorite of the fire god. When at last he comes, he will be proclaimed high priest and king of the Golden Isle. <laughs> well, Tom, old buddy, you get it? And you think that you could be that stranger? I know I can. Walk the coals and not be burned. Not burned, singed, scorched, or toasted. All right, let's assume that you can do it. So you've got the white skin, if not the pure heart. So the brown-skinned islanders make you high priest and king. So what? How does that make us a million bucks? You a million, twice, three times that much for me. Answer the question. How does King Brad Stewart make us millions? Kamala is an island of jewels... More treasure there than in Salon. Oh, fine. You're king. You sit on a gold throne. You're worshipped by a lot of superstitious natives who can't even speak your language. Fun and games. Stuck on an island, what good are jewels and a gold throne? Forget the gold throne, the jewels. Concentrate on the statue of the fire god. Yeah, what about it? Wait, I'll, uh, I'll read you about that, gentlemen. The, uh, the trench of coals through which the chosen ones walk is one yard wide, 20 yards long. At the end of their fiery ordeal, a majestic, fearsome statue of the fire god waits for them. They kneel to him and worship. Uh-huh, so? So listen to this. The life-size idol worth a king's ransom is solid gold 
studded with unnumbered flawless diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds. <laughs> is that a few million bucks or isn't it? Hey, look. A picture of him. I bring that gorgeous hunk back to the States. Wow, take it off the island? How do you get away with that, chum? I'm king. I have absolute power. The dumb heathen worship me, love me, obey me. I say, sorry, uh, beloved subjects, the fire god has ordered me to take the statue to, uh, to other believers across the world. They won't even try to stop me. It's a cinch. Well, sure, a cinch predicated on the assumption that you can waltz over those coals without getting a hot foot. A little modern science, that's your department. A little hocus-pocus from me, and I pull it off. I can even talk to the priestess uh, without an interpreter. Uh, wait a minute. What priestess? <laughs> Where's that part about the... Uh... Yeah, here it is. The island has always been ruled by a woman, a priestess. But the stranger they foretell will be a man. The present ruler of surpassing beauty descends from the royal line that has ruled for centuries. Educated in England, she nevertheless embraces all the island's ancient customs and beliefs. Come on, a beautiful priestess yet. Educated speaks English, but believes all that hogwash about a white-skinned stranger. Well, we in business? Brad, if you're asking, can I produce a chemical combination that will see your feet through half a city block of live coals? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. There's a chemical that expands into gas when it's exposed to heat. Now, you combine that with... Never mind how you do it. Just do it. Has it occurred to you that Kamala belongs to India? I mean, even if you get away with the idol, you'll have bad trouble getting a priceless antiquity out of Asia. Bribery does it. After this hustle, I can afford it. Now, let's, uh, let's get to the bottom line. A million dollars is your take if you can air condition my feet. Is it a deal? No. No? <laughs> you want more? Look, I dreamed up this caper. Why should now, you... Wait, wait, a minute, million... wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold your fire. You see, I'm, I'm not as greedy as you are. A million will do nicely, thank you. Pay for lab equipment I need. Now, there's, uh... There's something else I want. What? To go on this safari with you. <laughs> I, uh, I thought you were about to ask me for the priestess. <laughs> sure you can go. Why not? Well, I I'll take Christy. You take your girl. We'll have a ball. Well, I haven't got a girl. Well, then maybe you, uh, maybe you do want the priestess. It says right here she's a knockout. I could probably pull that off, too. Well, oh, thanks a lot, but I don't think that I'd go for a doll who worships fire. Hey, but what about Christy? What about her? Will she approve of this hoax? <laughs> Little Chrissy approves of anything I do. Does she know what you do? She knows what I choose to tell her. Take her along, and you'll have to tell her the truth about this. Look, I can handle Chris. You handle those chemicals. Yeah. Well, come to think of it, I'm, I'm not so sure that I approve of this caper myself. You don't have to approve. Just invent. And keep in mind, we have to leave by the middle of next month. <laughs> After that, hallelujah, I'll be a zillionaire. travel article. I quote, Through the years, more than one stranger has landed on Kamala claiming to be the anointed one. Not one man could withstand the trial by fire. All were painfully burned. The natives will tell you that the imposters were exposed by the fire god, who then cursed them with fire. Close the quotes. Close this act. Second act. Shortly. Let us pursue that magazine article a little further. Quote, the Kamalans believe and seemingly demonstrate that only the pure of heart can walk unharmed. Before the walking begins, 
A wooden statue of a man is flung on the coals to prove they are alive and cruel. The charred, doomed statue represents the fate of any fraudulent person who would test the fire god's sinister power. End quote. Now, let Tom Hendricks take up the story. Just two weeks before we were to leave, Brad read Christie the article. When he finished, not a word about the swindle we planned. Only a question. Well, Princess, how would you like to see that firewalk? Oh, Brad, do you mean it? I do. I've got some business in those parts. Oh, but you'll never take me on your trip. I'm taking you on this one. I've already reserved our flight to India, 14th of this month. India, too? Oh, I've always wanted to see India. No, I'm afraid there's no, there's no time for India, Christy. Oh. The, the firewalk is on the 16th. We won't even get to Madras till the 15th. Oh. I have to uh, charter a boat of some kind. You see, all sorts of problems. You'll see Madras, but that's all of India you'll get. Well, then, after the firewalk... Oh, Brad, we can't be over there and not see the Taj Mahal and Mount Everest. No, not afterwards either. I'll, I'll have some extra luggage that I can't exactly uh, carry around or check somewhere. What extra luggage? Oh, just some uh, jewels I expect to pick up in Kamala for my girl. Oh, Brad, but... you're so good to me. But jewels don't weigh all that much. Well, they do and they don't. The gems I'll get for you will be bigger than any you've ever dreamed of. How would you like that, that 485 carat sapphire the article talks what? about? It... Yeah, value $250,000. That's in the statue of the fire god. Nothing's too good for my princess. Count on it. That sapphire as big as an egg is yours. Oh, sure. <laughs> the pretty priestess will sell you a jewel from the sacred idol for $1.95. Sell? She'll give it to me. <laughs> Darling, dearest, you know you're terribly attractive, but sorry, sweetheart, not that attractive. Want to bet? <laughs> I'm on. telling you that priestess will give me anything I ask. Brad, you really do think she will, don't you? I don't think, sweetheart. I know. It was only a joke to Christy. Charming Brad playing a charming game some game. It was about that time, a day or two later, that I soured on the whole deal. I had put together the formula Brad needed and given it to him. I wish I hadn't. I went to his apartment and told him so. Back? You want the formula back? You heard me, Brad. Why? Well, I, I, I've changed my mind about it. I don't think that it'll work. What do you mean, won't work? We know it works. We tested the thing. Not on 20 yards of burning coal. Look, last week, you were damn well pleased with that formula, ready to patent it. Now you show up here carping about how it won't do the job. Don't try to con me, Hendrix. I'm a master at that game, and I can smell a con a mile off. Now, what the hell is this all about? All right, I'm, I'm worried about Christy. Christy? Brad, you're tempting Providence. Yes, my formula will do the job. At least I think it will. But... What if those natives you swindle catch you out just the same? You know what they'll do? They'll tear you apart. And then what happens to Christy? That that stuff from my feet is colorless, odorless, transparent as water. They can't see it or smell it or feel it. How can they catch me out? I don't know how. I, I do know that the Kamalans walk on fire without a formula. In other words, they have primitive powers that we don't know anything about. Oh, come on, Brad, don't go to Kamala. Or if you must, don't take Christy with you. <laughs> worried about Christy? You're worried about your own hide, not hers, not mine. Then you stay home. Who needs you? Christy might. If she goes, I go. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding? All this knight in shining armor act. You're in love with my little Chrissy. You think I don't know that? You want me to leave you both behind and you hope the Kamalans will burn me on a spit like a shish kebab so you'll have a clear field. No, I'm sorry, friend. Christy goes. Brad was right. I was in love with Christy. A futile business. I knew that, but there it was. And the only reason I was still going on that trip was to take care of her if she needed me. So, all right, we arrive in India. We charter a sloop to take us to Kamala. An old, beat-up craft with a single sail. Three small, rough cabins. A crew of four. 
We sailed from Madras the next morning out of the Bay of Bengal into the Indian Ocean, a three to six hour journey, depending on the winds. Christy still knew nothing of the real reason we were going. Brad chose an odd, oblique way to tell her, but deviousness was his stock in trade. He struck up a conversation with one of the Indian sailors near where Christy sat in a deck chair within earshot. That, uh, uh, that fire walk tonight on Kamala, the, uh, the walkers, uh, they cheat a little, huh? So? Uh, they protect their feet with some sort of magic, uh, potion, right? No, Sahib. Fire walk is sacred. God of fire punish unbeliever. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I hear there's a big legend that someday a white stranger from afar will walk through that furnace and not even get a blister. True, sir. When stranger walk, no burn, no pain, he will be king and high priest of Kamala. You, uh, you believe all that? Oh, yes, sir. Then, my friend, you'd better kneel at my feet. You're talking to the man in the legend. Tonight, I walk the sacred fire. Uh, no, Sahib, you'd not believe. Fire God will smite you. <laughs> Who do you think you're kidding? I tell you, I'll walk where angels fear to tread. And I won't feel a thing. The God will know, sir. You will feel. You will burn. Want to bet? <laughs> on your way, sailor. Go on, back to your duty. Yes, Sahib, I go. Well, Princess, uh, how'd you like that little exchange? Oh, you shouldn't tease him like that, Brad. They take their rituals very seriously. So do I. Sometimes I wonder if you take anything seriously. Sure. The fire walk. I really am walking that primrose path tonight. Oh, you're not. I am. Didn't I promise you that sapphire? They're not about to give it to anyone who isn't the high priest. Tom invented some magic stuff to protect my feet. What's the matter? You're serious. Remember I told you I'd have some uh, extra luggage so we couldn't traipse all over India? Jewels, you said. Heavy ones, I said that too. Heavy because they'll be in the statue of the fire god. I'm uh, bringing him back to New York for a souvenir. You are serious. That. No, not a thing to worry about, baby. Tom and I tested the stuff for my feet. It works like a breeze. <sighs> Cools like a breeze. Brad, I don't mean the walking. I, I mean, you, you, you can't steal their beautiful sacred statue. You can't. <laughs> Worried about a statue and not about me? <sighs> Look, I'm not stealing it, Christy. The priestess lady will give it to me. Mine free and clear. No crime committed. But it's theirs. They, they worship different Look, I worked this all out just for you, a big romantic adventure. And now listen to you. You did it for me? Who else? Then why didn't you tell me about it before? I wanted it to be a surprise when you got here. And I don't even get a thank you. Well, I... I guess I thank you, but... Please, you can't do it. It's wrong, Brad. I know it's wrong. Now, sweetheart, listen to me. Oh, but Brad... So those ignorant pagans lose a bucket full of precious jewels. Not, not stolen, remember, given. The island is lousy with jewels. They can make another idol, bigger, better. You say they, uh, they've worshipped the old one for centuries? What else have they done for centuries? I don't know what. Waited for, prayed for the coming of that white stranger. You think it won't be a big thrill for the legend to come true? If I get you ten, some of the believers have begun to lose faith. They give me the statue. I give them back their faith. Hail to the high priest. But the high priest isn't staying there. Does the legend say he would? No. Come on, Christy. Where's the harm in this? I'm doing the Kamalans a favor. Christy let Brad persuade her. Well, hadn't I let him do the same thing to me? When we reached the lush tropical island mid-afternoon, Brad had no trouble getting an audience with the priestess. The article had said that she was of surpassing beauty, and she was. She sat on a throne of carved teakwood, and Brad knelt before her. Royal lady, your god of fire has come to me in a vision. Go across the world, he said, 
for I have chosen you to conquer the sacred fire. I bid you hasten to the golden isle. Priestess of the God, I have obeyed. I am here. Describe to me our God of fire, that we may know it was in truth he who came to you, and not another. He is golden, like fire. Everything about him is like fire. Fiery jewels, hair like streaming flames, long fingers like fire reaching toward me. On his face a look that filled me with dread if I did not obey his command. Oh, stranger from afar, verily, you have seen our God. If you are a true believer, I and his subjects welcome you. You will see him again at midnight when we walk the flames in supplication to the God. If you walk without blemish, we shall proclaim you high priest and king of Kamala. If I weren't a true believer, would I dare walk through fire? Others of evil intent have pretended to believe have braved the fire. Heed this warning, O oh stranger. Anyone of impure heart, the fire of God punishes with fire. Royal lady, I revere the God with all my heart. At midnight, I will return and prove I am his chosen one. <laughs> the sloop, straight to Brad's cabin. He had to soak his feet in the protective solution until time for us to leave again. Christy was terribly frightened. Brad, terribly amused. Brad, I beg you not to do this. You will be burned. Chrissy, this stuff works. Here, look, I'll prove it. I've only been soaking about five minutes, but, uh, watch this. Presto. Cigarette lighter lights. Lighter flame held under large toe of high priest's left foot. Count to 50, Chris. No, I won't. You, you really can't feel it? It doesn't burn? Stupendous black magic. Courtesy of Tom Hendricks. <laughs> now quit worrying. I can't. It works. I'm proving it. Tom, you tell her. Well, Christy, it, it does work. Don't you believe your own eyes? I believe the priestess. Did you see her eyes when she said, the fire god punishes with fire? That's pagan superstition and mumbo-jumbo. Look here, I'm still holding the lighter under my toe. And keeping my cool. Well, even if you walk and aren't burned, you, you heard what that sailor said? The god will know what you are? Oh, Brad, he'll do something else to you, something too terrible even to imagine. <laughs> not persuaded. Five minutes before midnight, the embers in the trench glowed blood red. The heat was so intense it was painful to stand anywhere near. The wooden statue, the one used for a test, was blazing when we came, as if anyone needed proof that that incinerator was murderous. Oh, Brad, please don't do it. Brad, she's right. Give it up. Shut up, both of you. Go wait for me beside the fire guard. Hey, look. He's in place where the walk ends. Oh, wow. What a sight. He looks alive. He looks like a dumb idol. Now go on. We went. I took Christie's hand. It was cold in all that heat. Natives lined both sides of the trench now. At the other end stood the priestess, arms raised heavenward. Three women and four men clustered around her. They, too, would walk, the pure of heart. And then there was Brad, head piously bowed, hands folded in the position of prayer. And then suddenly... Oh, sacred God of fire, lead the faithful and pure of heart through thy flames. But upon any who are evil... Visit thy revenge. The priestess stepped down into the coals. 
There was a most ominous silence. Not a sound from anyone, from anywhere. Night birds, crickets, natives. Silent. How regally the priestess glided down that tortuous path, straight to the fire god, and there knelt. The seven natives came next and knelt. Brad stood waiting. He could have followed the others, but he wanted his moment to be big and dramatic. He wanted and got top billing. Oh, stranger from afar. Walk. That magazine article gave another chilling piece of information. Chilling? Not a word that suits our subject. Again, I quote, The temperature of the firewalk coals, measured with an optical pyrometer, registered 1,330 degrees Fahrenheit. Close quotes. Brad Stewart will walk through that? Or will he? Act three promises the answer. Roman mythology, the name of the god of fire was Vulcan. Ancient Romans greatly feared the destructive deity. Not Brad Stewart. Reluctantly, one has to admire his rash courage, his arrogant indifference to the risk he would take. Apparently not a nerve in his body, he stood there, ready to step into and walk, not run, the gauntlet of 20 yards of searing coals measuring over a thousand degrees of heat. He had tested the insulation on his feet, yes, but not under conditions like this. Would modern technology outwit primitive mysticism? Tom Hendricks will finish the story. Why the devil didn't Brad get on with it? Afraid after all? No. He was relishing the limelight, the suspense, and he wanted more fanfare. He got it. Walk. Oh, stranger. Walk. He walked. I watched his face for signs of pain. None. He sauntered down that fiery path as if it were a garden path. The uncanny silence continued, except four words whispered by the priestess standing beside me. He walked. He walked. By the halfway point, the fire worshippers lining both sides of the trench began to kneel. The poor, deluded souls believed they were paying homage to their new high priest. The walk finished. Brad knelt in his turn paying homage to the god. The priestess placed both hands on his head. Stranger. Who has conquered the sacred flame? We rejoice in thy coming. Bow to thy majesty. And I proclaim thee high priest and most high ruler of the golden iron. She repeated that proclamation in the Kamalan language. The long silence ended and cheers rose to the heavens. A kind of incantation of the Brad came to his feet, faced the crowd, standing there like, yes, like a king. He waited for the caterwauling to stop. When it went on and on, King Brad Stewart shouted his first command to his subjects. Silence! Be silent! They couldn't understand the English words, but his raised, imperious hand announced what he wanted. Instant silence, instant obedience. He spoke then to the priestess. Here was the final test. Would she see through him? Would some occult message reveal him for what he was? Well, give the devil his due. Brad gave a great performance. Even I, who knew him and despised him, was impressed. Royal Princess, I am greatly honored, deeply moved, and it is with sorrow and regret that I tell you I am not destined to be ruler of this beautiful isle. I cannot have heard thee correctly. You have indeed heard correctly. It is ordained that you continue to rule. No. It is forbidden. Once it was forbidden. No longer. 
There has come to pass a new command. But thou art the favored chosen one of the God himself. Pray you listen, madam. I, most high priest of Kamala, have seen another vision. Our God of fire has once again appeared to me, honored me with his presence. Yet again? These were his words, his command. Take my golden image across the world and gather unto me new believers. Sire, take the golden one from us. No, no, no. Go at once, he said. Do not tarry beyond this day. It cannot be. Cannot. It must be. Would you have me disobey the God? Without the beloved golden one, we will sicken and die. Oh, sire, we know this. We have always known. Listen well. The God commands that your subjects make another golden one, which he will doubly bless. You will obey? We will do as the God commands. And all will be well. That is my promise, royal lady, and the promise of the God. I leave you now. Say to your people that they are not to follow. That is an order from their high priest and king. <coughs> She gave the order. That silence again, uncanny, somehow threatening. No one moved except our threesome. Brad and I picked up the statue. Heavy. All that gold. And started for the sloop. How'd I do, kiddies? What a star performance, huh? Yeah. Abracadabra, open sesame. <laughs> Eye of the newt and toe of the frog. Wool of bat and tongue of dog. Never mind the Shakespeare. Christy, are you all right? No. No, the priestess and all the people looked so sad when you took their statue. Oh, no, come off it, Chris. How about a little praise instead of worrying about those pagan fools? I do worry. I hate it all. Why did I ever bring you along? Lay off, Brad. You got what you wanted. You bet your sweet life I did. I'm rich, rich, rich. Oh, Lord, this statue's heavy. Yeah, three times as heavy as gold should make it. Like it's a iron, a marble. It wants to stay. Okay, that'll be enough out of you. It's strange how... How heavy it is. I don't know how much longer I can... Oh, it's a good thing the sloop is close. Yeah. Brad, Tom, look behind us. We looked. From the trench of coals, a thick tongue of flame was streaming toward us. The fire god had spoken. Oh! Run! No! Run! Drop no! the statue. No! Too heavy. Drop it. All right. We ran, 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 pursued by fire by murderous natives. We made the sloop, raced on board, and pulled up the gangplank, the anchor. The wind was with us. Set sail! Put to sea! Fire can't cross water! We're safe! Safe! I don't think so. It isn't over yet. I know it is. Will you shut up? Those howling banshees can't get at us. They haven't even got a canoe. Now quit falling, and thank God we weren't burned alive. That streak of fire that followed us. It couldn't happen, but it did. How could it happen? Scientifically impossible. I'll tell you how it could happen. That wench of a priest has hypnotized us. Made us think we saw it wasn't there. It was there. It was there, all right. I could feel the heat. One more minute on shore and we'd be cremated right now. I don't believe it. Because you don't want to. You're afraid to. Afraid me? After what I did? I tell you, hadn't panicked, I'd have my statue. And now nothing. Not rich. Tricked out of what I earned. Oh, Chris, damn it. If you hadn't started Look, yelling. Don't blame Chris. That flame was as real as... Hey, look. There it is again on the shore. It is. It is. What's it doing? It's, it's taking the shape of, of a man. No. Not, not a man. It's, it's the real fire god. Formed out of that flame. It's nothing but the idol. They carried it to the shore, stood it up, and... No, it, it isn't the idol. No. No, it's twice as tall. It's enormous. It's growing. It's growing. There's something demonic about this. Oh, right. It's more of their hypnosis. I wish to heaven it was hypnosis. 
No, Brad, it's real. That thing on the shore, that, that god, it's growing into a giant... I can't bear to look. Look, for Pete's sake, will you both get your heads together? It's hocus pocus. It has to be. It doesn't mean a thing. Don't be too sure, old stranger from afar. We're at sea. That, that thing is on shore. What difference if it... Ah, you both make me sick. I've lost a fortune, and all you can do is snivel about some stupid voodoo. I'm going to my cabin. He went. Christy and I stood there by the ship's rail, watching the islanders and the, whatever it was grow smaller and smaller, while we on the deck felt safer and safer. Whatever sorcery those ancient people practiced, it wasn't effective anywhere but on their island. A fixed law of nature prevailed. Fire could not cross water. But Christy still had a sense of foreboding. Tom, tell me it's really over. Oh, honey, it is. Now, stop trembling. In about half a minute, Kamala and its outraged citizens will be clean out of sight. Oh, I'm so glad that they have their statue. Yeah, so am I. There. Now you can only see the ocean. Feel better? A little. What happened? Punishment, wasn't it? Yeah, well deserved punishment. Brad for the rip off he tried to pull, me for helping him. But not you, Christy. You were never part of it. I was. I should have stopped him when I found out. Well, you tried. You couldn't. Nothing and no one could change his course. The islanders worship fire. Brad worships money. I didn't know before. Oh, I hope he's learned his lesson now. I doubt it. I doubt it, too. That ravenous hunger for money gets worse, not better. Tom, listen. What? Is it thunder? No. It's the drums. Why? Why? Now, honey, take it easy. It, it, it means something. I know it does. The natives have gone back to their ceremony, that's all. It stopped. There, you see? All's well. Same tongue of fire. It's coming. Fast. You said it couldn't cross water. No, it's above the water. It'll burn the ship. Oh. No, it's worse. Oh. It's aiming for Brad's cabin. Let's go. Oh. God, the door's oh. locked. Brad! Brad! Get out of there. Oh. Snack, I'll, I'll break it down. I swear, I saw a streak of fire spiral through the porthole out to sea. The cabin was a furnace of heat. Brad's twisted, charred body lay on the floor, dead. If all that is not strange enough for fanciers of the macabre, hear this postscript. Although Brad Stewart burned to death, no other object in that cabin was touched by fire. Nothing else even scorched. How could such a thing be? Only the primitive people on the island of Kamala have the answer. I'll be back shortly. Afterthought. Recall, please, this passage in the travel article. Before the fire walking begins... A wooden statue of a man is placed on the coals to prove they are alive and cruel. The charred, doomed statue represents the fate of any fraudulent person who would test the fire god's sinister power. Fraudulent Brad Stewart. Charred. cast included Norman Rose, Michael Tolan, and E.B. Juster. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can
can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian.